Chapter 7 is about chemical reactions. The first section here talks about some reactions, some chemical reactions that you've, you're probably familiar with. Uh, one of them is called a grade school volcano. Um, perhaps you made one of these in grade school or saw one where you make this volcano out of clay and then maybe paint it or you could make it out of paper mache. And then inside of it, you have a container with baking soda and you pour some vinegar in there and maybe some red food coloring and it bubbles up and erupts and, and goes all over the place and makes a really big mess. It's, it's really awesome. I should probably make one and bring it into class. That'd be fun. Or even, even, I should get my act together and find a YouTube video of one because that's almost as good without the mess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, a grade school volcano involves the reaction between baking soda, which is sodium hydrogen carbonate, and vinegar. There's acetic acid in vinegar. And those two compounds react to form carbon dioxide gas, water, and sodium carbonate. And that is a chemical reaction. When we talk about a chemical reaction, we're, we're talking about something that involves the transformation of one or more substances into different substances. This is a chemical change. The chemicals you start with are not what you end up with. The original ones are destroyed and new ones are formed. And what makes it bubble out of the volcano is those carbon dioxide bubbles. And the formation of carbon dioxide is an important part in much of um, cooking, especially baking. The reason the bread rises is because the yeast gives off carbon dioxide and those little bubbles cause the bread to rise up. There's a lot of chemistry involved in cooking. Um, this reaction gives off a gas. So it occurs in a liquid and it forms a gas. Those are called gas evolution reactions. We're going to talk about several different types of chemical reactions. Another chemical reaction in, occurs inside of a, an internal combustion engine, inside your car engine. Hydrocarbons such as octane, which are present in gasoline, combine with oxygen from the air. They react to form carbon dioxide and water. The octane is destroyed. Carbon dioxide and water are formed. If you were able to fuel your car with pure octane, then there would really be no pollutant at all. There would be carbon dioxide, which is present normally in the air, and, and water. The reason that cars pollute the atmosphere is because they're using uh, petroleum-based gasoline, which is a mixture of all kinds of different things, and so you get a lot of impurities in there. It's the impurities that cause the, uh, the pollution, not the uh, octane itself. So a combustion reaction involves um, oxygen, something combining with oxygen, and that is a subcategory of oxidation reduction reactions, and we'll talk more about these. This is just the introduction. In an oxidation reduction reaction, we have electrons being transferred from one thing to another. Here's a little illustration of, of your car engine, and you've got octane combining with oxygen, and it rearranges and forms carbon dioxide and water. The original substances are destroyed and new substances are formed. And the reason we like this reaction is because it's exothermic, and it gives off energy, which we can use to make the car go forward. Always a good thing. There's chemistry involved in washing your clothes. Why do we use laundry detergent in the washer instead of hand soap? Well, for one thing, if you have a front loader, high efficiency machine, all those bubbles uh, cause a problem. But laundry detergent actually works much better for cleaning clothes than hand soap does because the laundry detergent has water softeners in it. Hard water has calcium and magnesium ions, and the water we have here in the Fresno area is hard water. It's mostly from groundwater. It has a lot of dissolved minerals. That's not a bad thing. Those minerals are good for you, but it does cause a problem when we wash clothes or other things. The calcium and magnesium interfere with the action of the soap. They combine with it and make a gray, slimy substance. If you've ever looked closely at the washing machine, you might have seen it. There's this, this kind of scummy stuff. Um, it also builds up around the kitchen faucet in the bathtub, and you get this white, scummy stuff, right? 
hard water deposits. If we put soap in pure water without any deposits in it, it, it bubbles up very nicely. If you do put some soap in hard water, it doesn't bubble up as much. You need a lot more soap to get that soapy feeling and that soapy appearance in hard water than you do in, in pure water or soft water. So the laundry detergent has things in it like sodium carbonate. That's also known as washing soda. It is slightly different than baking soda. It has two sodiums instead of a, one sodium and a hydrogen. What happens is the carbonate ions from the sodium carbonate react with calcium and magnesium to form calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. Those are insoluble substances and they just come out of solution. And so they're, they're messing around in the bottom of your washer but they're not going to get on your clothes and they're not going to interact with the soap and mess up the soap. So the sodium carbonate removes the calcium and magnesium ions. This is an example of a precipitation reaction. These are reactions that form solid substances in water.